Have you heard, have you heard of a, a ordering a Gretzky? Oh, what? Yeah. A Wayne Gretzky? Yeah. Or is it just Gretzky? You should, a Wayne Gretzky or a Gretzky. What is a Wayne Gretzky, Matt? Nine creams, nine sugars. <laughs> 99 is a hockey <laughs> number, right? <laughs> and like Tim Hortons is Canadian, so yeah, we got a medium Gretzky. <laughs> So, welcome today. I have an incredibly important guest. His name is Matt Hebert. He is a good friend of mine, and uh, he is a fellow coffee enthusiast. And so, um, I figured since we are hanging out, talking about coffee, I am going to make some siphon. Cool. That's sick. Thanks for having me. Yes. I, uh, we have to kind of share this. We just had an incident happen where I ran upstairs and my siphon exploded. Yeah. It, was, it sounded nuts. It was like, <laughs> it sounded like, <laughs> like an explosion, like a literal explosion. So I, I thought maybe Matt had pushed everything off the table. I run downstairs. Matt is sitting here at the table and there's this like water everywhere. So I'm frantically getting <laughs> these uh, towels wiping off all of the uh, equipment. Yeah. All right. So we're going to make some siphon here. This is a completely different a way of making coffee yeah. um it looks like makes my basement look like a meth lab which probably isn't the best thing for a pastor and i always have to f- i always feel like i have to explain myself yeah please don't explode please like, don't explode like the walter white of coffee <laughs> <laughs> all right so what's gonna happen is water is gonna go up when if this water is boiling on the bottom here okay and then so there's a a a basin of water on the bottom there's some water up top and uh, because the water on the bottom is boiling it goes up to the top and once it goes up to the top i put freshly ground coffee beans in there but um and once all the water is up there i pour the coffee beans in right boom oh yeah that's fancy it is fancy okay now i gotta stir it I don't have a string stick here, <laughs> so I'm just going to use a uh, multi-purpose tool. That's right. <laughs> Otherwise known as a scissor. So, or pizza shears if you're from Manitoba. Pizza shears. There we go. <laughs> you know, I've seen an old uh, Sylvester Stallone movie. I think it's called Cobra or something oh, yeah? like that. I love that movie. <laughs> really? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I think the, the opening scene is where uh, he's eating pizza and he, he cuts it with scissors. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems so manly when you're cutting stuff with scissors. <laughs> yeah, like I don't remember that part of the movie. I just like imagine like them him sitting there like on the old couch, just like a greasy like undershirt, just like big pepperoni cheese pizza, just some scissors, just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so, anyways, so um, all right, so we're gonna wait for a little bit. This coffee will be ready soon. Um, as we're waiting for the coffee, uh. Matt, tell, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself. Um, let's see. So where do I start? Well, I'm 28. I'm getting married next week. Congratulations. Thank you to the prettiest girl in the whole world. Her name's Maddie. And yeah, um, I really like coffee. I'm a firm believer in Jesus Christ. I am stuck in the whirlwind of coffee and guitars and that crazy lifestyle. That's awesome. Me and you go way back. Yeah. I mean, really far back. Um, I was a junior youth leader, Mm -hmm. and you were in my junior high group. Yes, I was. Right? Um, That was like, what, 14, 15 years ago? (laughs) That was 15 years ago. Yeah, it was like 15. (laughs) I was like married for like a year, and so I was this uh, young youth pastor who was just had a lot of energy and I burnt it all out on you guys. So, all right, so my our siphon is almost done. I took away the heating element, which means that the the water cooled down. As it cooled down, the, the, the top basin now is releasing the heavenly nectar down into the bottom basin and we are seeing this unfold before our very eyes. It's really good. Awesome. Great color to it too. Oh yeah. Nice amber. I gotta, I gotta get audio of this. This is, Me pouring the coffee. Nice. That's what heaven's gonna sound like when we die. Jesus is gonna be there with his heavenly brew. We're gonna die as a liquid. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we did, it would be coffee. All right, cool. All right, so Matt, what first sparked your interest in coffee? When were you like, oh man, this is good? I think it was like 17, 18. I was working at a superstore um, in oh, produce. Yeah, mm-hmm. like on weekends or this is like when I was in high school still like on Saturdays there's sometimes where I'd start work at like 5 30 in the morning I was like just really tired in the morning so like I tried like coffees one time so I was like I don't know what do you get so when you're like new to something you just go off what's familiar right it's like I was used to my dad like when when we went to mornings we all get like a medium regular and so like okay I guess I'll get a medium regular and like, I tried it's like oh man this is disgusting like it's the worst thing on earth like then I don't know after a while like it's like okay I get need to ramp it up like it's it's helping like me stay awake like early in the morning but like uh-huh. where's the flavor in this stuff like come on like so i think i went straight to like a like a four by four then wow. for, yeah just just trying to push me through in the morning for cream and four sugar yeah then uh i think from there i went to like a double double and that was just like that happy medium for a while then <laughs> actually a side note have you heard have you heard of boy uh, ordering a gretzky what? Yeah. A Wayne Gretzky? Yeah. Or is it just Gretzky? You should, Wayne Gretzky or Gretzky. What is a Wayne Gretzky, Matt? Nine creams, nine sugars. <laughs> 99 is a hockey <laughs> number, right? <laughs> and like Tim Hortons is Canadian, so yeah, I'll get a medium Gretzky. Like, I wonder if when people order that, if they actually drink that. I don't know. Like, It's got to be a joke. That's got to shave like two years off your life. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised that's not like a TikTok challenge yet. Like ordering a Gretzky and trying one. Maybe it should be. Next time I have you on the show, we're going to order Wayne Gretzky's. <laughs> we're see what happens. Commit. Full commit. A full commit, man. We'll be off the wall. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Too much dairy and too much sugar. Wow. When I went to Bible college, like, it all kind of changed. Like, mm-hmm. I was introduced to some friends, and um, me and my roommate, Riley, um, was it? We bo- He was a huge Tim Hortons person. I was a huge Starbucks person at the time. But, like, we both like coffee. So, yeah. I'm like, okay, this is cool. Then, uh we bought a coffee maker together from liquidation world back when it was around rest in peace. Whoa. Then we both had a friend, um, Matthew uh-huh. and, um, he had an arrow press. So yeah, he, he just like showed me it and just like, mm-hmm. this is the literal arrow press. You put hot water and coffee in it, you time it and you just plunge it. And I was just like, Oh wow. Like this is completely different. Like the feel of the coffee is completely different. It, it tastes different. And like, I can drink it without cream and sugar. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the one thing that uh, I keep hearing from people. When you first introduced me to that, I'm like, what in the world? Like, it's not just, it's not just like this bitter, bitter hot water. Like it, it actually has like flavor to it. Right. You were talking about Starbucks a little bit. I, I remember for me growing up, I'm a Mennonite boy. Right. So like one of the dishes Mennonites would have, um, is called, uh, what's it called? Bratten? Uh, yes. Oh, I'm having it for breakfast tomorrow. Schmott, Schmott Bratten. Yeah. Schmott Bratten, if anyone needs to know. Oh, it's so good. It, It's like you toast buns, but they're like Mennonite buns called Tvai Bak. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and what you do is after you toast them in the oven, you take them out and then you pour coffee on it with some cream. And we actually put salt on it. Yeah. So, yeah. And it actually tastes really good. So, I, as I have a, to try it tomorrow. I started this when I was like four-year-old boy yeah and so i'm like whoa and it tasted so good i remember and ever since i was a little kid i love coffee yeah. you know i don't know if this is true but they're like don't drink coffee when you're so young it's gonna stunt your growth i'm six foot three yeah you know if that's true what was i gonna be like seven foot five like yeah. i'm so glad yeah. i drank coffee because it had stopped me at six foot three right and mm-hmm. so but then when we became teenagers Going to Starbucks, especially after seeing a movie, we sat down and we debriefed the movie. We we had our coffee and we were like, whoa. And so every time I had coffee, I ins- I connected that with those experiences. Mm-hmm. The, has that ever happened like to you with, oh, with coffee? Time. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, coffee shops. I think that's like the prime example. Like back before like the Rona and all that, like, you know, go to Detroit for like a Saturday afternoon. I'm going to go to three or four different coffee shops. Yeah. Try four different things and like. I'm going to be wired all night, but like there's going to be certain experiences that relate to that, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a good thing about having the coffee the way you like it and you know what to expect every time. Yeah. But, but I love this because it's it's adventurous. Like this, these beans, uh, this is from Red Lantern, a uh, local shout coffee. Shout out to Craig. Yeah, shout out to Craig. This is Honduras, just incredible coffee. 
Uh, so if you ever get a chance, um, support support the local coffee mm-hmm. roasters. Absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, well, like what what makes coffee good to you? What makes it good for me? Um, I think it depends on what season of life I'm mm-hmm. at. Interesting. Like when I moved back from out west, like yes, coffee was just very like. It was, a, it was a very independent thing. It was like a, kind of like a form of solitude. Like for me, I don't know. Like it was when I made coffee in the morning, like I was kind of like time to pray. Like, you know, I've dedicated the next, this next five minutes at this point, like making coffee is like muscle memory. Right. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, I'm going to pray for five minutes. And like, that's kind of like, it was like a special moment, like where I kind of like learned how to pray and just how to have a proper conversation with God. And it was having to be over a nice cup of coffee. Just, Wow, there's a, I think heaven might be like that too. Like, like yo, Jesus, let's sip this geisha and just you know, you know, you just you just had to make it so deep and spiritual immediately. It's like it can't just be like you know. It just um, it activates these taste buds in my yeah. mouth, and that's what does it for me. No, I I love how deep you went right away. All right, Matt, let's uh, move on to the next question. Um, my question for you is, what is your favorite? method of making coffee right now and and why right now yeah i'd um i'd say pour over specifically i got an origami brewer um why why do you prefer that way as opposed to like um other ways um like i don't really know like like a french press like i don't know just just i don't vibe with the french press like the like the idea of just like having coffee just sit in water and like letting it like fester <laughs> fester <laughs> like ferment yeah kind of like and like i don't know it's just like there's nothing against like french presses like i think it's like kind of like no yeah. everyone's like first like brewer like okay i want to i want to try making good coffee yeah so everyone just gets like a french press like like great there's lots of reasons for it like you can make coffee with it you can make macaroni and cheese with it you can make mr noodle <laughs> with it like i've done all three are you in serious the, in the same day i thought you were joking no i'm dead you, serious you make macaroni and cheese yeah. in your french press yeah you just pour your hot water in right like he's got to boil water for coffee anyway so like, yeah then you just put your noodles in there let it like chill for a while like <laughs> then you drain it with the thingy then you pour the strainer out you add your milk and your butter and your cheese there you can just eat it out of it too oh my goodness yeah. bible college acts there we go yeah wow yeah i'll tell you like my first experience like there was a step up for me from like normal coffee maker coffee mm-hmm. and then i went to manitoba to uh to bible college mm-hmm. and then we were invited over at someone's house mm-hmm. and they made me french press mm-hmm. And they freshly ground the beans. Ooh. That in, in and of itself makes yeah. a huge difference. That's right? Even if the beans aren't like the best quality, yeah. you, you freshly ground these beans so that they're the consistency of sand, right? And then and then they made and for me, I was sold. Um and but then you came back into my life. I don't know where you were. Uh maybe you went to Bible college and whatever, but yeah, 20, uh, 2011, 13, 2013. But you're like you're like, hey, have you had this type of coffee? I'm like, no, what, is, what are you talking about? And then that's when you introduced me to Chemex. Yeah. And Chemex is like you put a filter in the glass, right? And then you uh, put the fresh, freshly ground beans in there. And then you pour water and the water passes through. And then you and it, it collects at the bottom. And that was a huge change in my coffee experience. Absolutely. Like, wow. Right. And pour over same science. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. And then you told me about another coffee, uh, experience, like different shops. And you told me about siphon. So I had to buy like siphons and then I, I got to stop hanging out with you. Cause you, you <laughs> keep making me buy all these things. This grinder was inspired by you. This was inspired by you. Sure. Uh, everything. So you are a very expensive person to hang out with. Uh, I've been told that before. <laughs> 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 but it's all out of love, like, honestly. It is, it is yeah. So how do we, because here's the one thing, socially. Yeah. Me and you both love coffee. Yeah. But but we don't want to be associated with that the, title. Yeah. The, the snob. No, no. The coffee snob. What is a coffee snob, Matt? I, like, right now, it's like, it's that person on Instagram that's, hey, look, I have this, like, $230 scale. Yeah. That, like, literally does the same thing as, like, the $25 one that you did on, that you got off Amazon, but you got it three days faster because Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. It's, like, aesthetically, it's cool. Yeah. But, like, coffee is just more than just an aesthetic, which I think is entitled with the snob. 
Yes. Like, it's so easy to take coffee and just make it seem a lot harder than it is. Yes. Coffee's not hard. No. At the end of the day, you're water, coffee, time, filter. Exactly. Like, it's, it's not Simple. difficult. Yeah, it's, it's not rocket science. Yeah. I mean, this contraption seems a little bit um, sophisticated, the siphon, and th- but I barely ever make siphon. Yeah. But you're right. It's more about the experience, right? It's but a community I, I f- thing too, right? Exactly. Like, when I make good coffee, I, I'm not trying to, like, show off. I'm not trying to do it because I'm, I'm making you good coffee because that's how much I value you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I, If I go to other people's houses and make me a Keurig, I'm totally cool with a Keurig. Yeah. I'm cool if you get me Tim Hortons. It's more about, like, what we were talking about. It is a catalyst to relationship. Absolutely. Right? Coffee to me represents relationship. Mm-hmm. Me and you sitting down, having coffee, talking about life, talking yeah. about stuff, you know, having coffee. And I guess you could do other things with that. Like I've had Yarba, I've had Ted a Day down south, all my southern friends. You introduced me to Ted a Day and I didn't sleep that night. <laughs> As a junior youth all nighter. <laughs> yeah. I just remember being like, <gasps> Yeah. See, that's the only time people will drink Ted a Day with me because uh, the part of their brain uh, gets weakened and falls asleep at 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. So whip at the Ted a Day. And then I get all these teenagers hyped up on this Yarba stuff. The cool thing about Terere in Paraguay is such a social drink. They have a system. You make a circle of people. Mm-hmm. The person stands in the middle. He's the server. He he pours it into. Can you pass me that? Um, yeah, right there. Yes. Yeah, so this this is what you drink Terere from. This is the straw. Uh, this is the cup. The cup. You can even do it with um, uh, a. a like a bullhorn yeah yeah the, i have one was a bullhorn and then um it's called a guampa and this straw is called a i believe it's a bambilia and so you pour the uh, yarba in there and then you drink it out <clears throat> there's some dry stuff in there <clears throat> you you drink it out all the way and then you fill it up again with water and then you pass it around they keep drinking all of it and then you pass it to each and every person and it's a social drink which mm-hmm. i'm like that's so cool like for us that's what coffee represents to yeah. us it's like a community uh thing right yeah like i think music's kind of like the same way like you you grew, you grew up playing in a band yes and like i like i played in a band in college and like a, like a punk band in like at tail end of high school there yeah and it's just like you write a song together you don't want to hold that back to yourself and exactly like for friends you want you want to share it you experience it and the coffee's the same way like once you like for me you probably same way with you is like okay like i figured out how to make a good pour over i figured out how to make a like an affogato with that with a arrow press i want to show people that it's like someone comes over like hey do you want to try this coffee with ice cream and it's like nah like i'm good like no 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 it's really good like i promise and like you pretty much have to shove it down people's throats just because they don't understand it exactly maybe because they don't care or be they're scared of it but they're like wow like nine out of ten times like this is amazing how did you do it and it's just like this is what i'm passionate about right now this is how i made it i use this bean i use like this specific ice cream because it's really good ice cream yes and yeah it's just things that you're passionate about like you shouldn't have to like hold back on you should be able to you share it and like that's like the amazing thing about coffee yes and like same thing with music yes. there's like the two communities like that i can relate with that aren't individualistic mm. they they're like mm-hmm. they want you to grow and like back when like when i was like really into coffee i still don't really am into coffee but like i'd like yeah at hebrews like my little coffee cart right that's right and like everyone in the local community local com- coffee community was like do it like no one was like don't do it this is a bad idea they're like no do it and we'll do everything we can to help you that's crazy because yeah. usually that's a terrible business model yeah right it's a competitive thing yeah and here they're encouraging you to do it exactly. just because like coffee is like it's more than just of course there's a business element of it but i'm shocked that they were like so supportive yeah. of you like every single person like whether it was like i won't name names just like yeah. i don't know like how private information should be yeah but there's people like hey like you don't have to use my coffee but if you do that'd be sick whoa and like i'll cut you a deal and i find that that is a universal thing that i've experienced Mm -hmm. in coffee shops especially the privately owned ones Mm -hmm. whether like it's in detroit oh i'm so sad that the borders are closed because i love going into detroit and Mm -hmm. going to you know dessert oasis and there's like um ash coffee roasters Mm -hmm. like there there's and i walk in and every single one of them they treat you with dignity and respect and it's like they treat you like you're a friend. Yeah. Right. And, and that's actually one thing I ex- I like about Starbucks. When you when you go like uh, uh, order something from Starbucks, just the the kindness that you see. Mm-hmm. And uh, to be honest with you, as you're talking, I'm thinking you know, with COVID nineteen, 
I think if there's any type of healing element uh, or, uh, you know, if there's any type of um, tool that we can use to heal as a society, I think it should be through like coffee shops. Absolutely. You know, and that's why coffee shops do well in churches Mm -hmm. because coffee is a great catalyst to conversation. Mm-hmm. Conversations are catalyst to opening up and seeing where each other is at. Absolutely. You know, co- so like having this time of coffee, and that's the one thing that always that drew me to this this idea, you know, of like having coffee with someone because it means you're building a relationship, you're healing, you're being challenged, you're, yeah. you know, you're growing together. It's like iron sharpening iron, right? I have a really close friend of mine in um, Rochester, New York. He does this with chai. Yeah. He's called the Chai Guy. I met him in uh, San Diego uh, at a uh, conference. Nice. Yeah, and uh, as passionate as I am about coffee, he is passionate about chai. And he has an incredible testimony. That's um, cool. Yeah, if anyone wants to check him out on Instagram or, or social media, look up Chai Guy. Uh, he is just an incredible individual f- you know, he's also a follower of Jesus awesome. and just passionate about people. And he uses chai as a catalyst to build relationships yeah. and connect people with meaningful communities. I'm like this. It's more powerful than than just drinking an, a, a, a beverage. Right. Mm-hmm. It can be used as like music. Like you said, that's why I named this the like, coffee is art, because this can be used as a catalyst to enter into someone's life, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, whoa, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like such like a simple thing, but it's so deep. It is. There's like so many different like rabbit holes you can go down with and like mm-hmm. relationships is probably like the biggest part of it. Yeah. No. Other than that being like a physical beverage. Wow, that that was way more deep than I thought. Like, I was like well, we're just gonna talk about coffee. No way, man. <laughs> it's so much deeper than that because it, like what we were talking about, like it, it can be used as a way to get into people's you know, people's lives. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's, uh, I think, uh, I think we're going to close it up, but, uh, Matt, it was a pleasure having you on my podcast today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. This is awesome. Hanging out with you. It's been long overdue and, uh, I would love to have you again and hang out and, uh, chat about some, uh, some more stuff. Right. Round two. Uh, Round two. All right. All right. So, uh, by the time people are going to listen to this or watch this, you will be, uh, married probably. Mm -hmm. So just want to give you a huge congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I wish you guys the best. And, uh, yeah. So anyways, thanks a lot for coming out. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And, uh, all right. We'll see you guys later.